Oops. Oh no. Sorry. Hi everyone. There's five of you in here now. Nice. Ten people. Yay. Thirteen. <laughs> Fifteen. Close your, close their eyes. Your eyes. Start I know. Close sorry. Your eyes I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> sorry. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome. Screencastify part one coming up shortly. So welcome to the webinar today. Have a seat. If you're not already sitting, have a seat. Grab some water. Get your typing fingers ready here. Uh, we'll give it a couple more seconds to let more people in the room. We do have an, uh, many people signed up this afternoon for the session. Um, we're, had, we're happy that you're here with us today. Again, Screencastify part one, starting very shortly. Um, Yes. So again, we'll give it a couple seconds, um, make sure we get everybody or most everybody in the room. And how are we doing on the participants here so far? Okay. All right, Leah, well, yeah, looks like it's slowing down on the participants coming into the room. So what we'll do is, again, we're here for Screencastify part one. And uh, before Elisa starts with the presentation, we will do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I think probably many of you have been in the OTAN webinars before, so you kind of know what the drill is, but for everyone new, uh, we'll make sure that we cover the, um, the basics on the housekeeping so everybody can follow along and uh, participate in today's session. So Elisa, if you wouldn't mind uh, stopping your sharing, thank you. I will switch over here. Go ahead and present this. Okay, so hopefully um, everybody can see my screen. So before we start, we're just going to go over a few uh, webinar tips uh, for today's session. So um, in terms of the audio, um, all the attendees in the room are muted except for the uh, except for the presenter, Elisa, and OTAN staff. So if you can't hear very well, um, if it's too loud or not loud enough, just make sure to adjust the volume on your system. And you also want to make sure um, along the Zoom toolbar near the bottom, there is an audio settings. Um, I was going to say drop down, but it actually goes up. But anyway, it's a menu where you can make sure that you have the correct audio device selected. And again, if the volume is not quite right, go ahead and adjust the volume on your system. All right, so folks, um, and I've already seen it starting. So um, in terms of uh, attendance and participation in today's webinar, please make sure you type your first and last name and your full agency or district name, no abbreviations, please, and do so in the chat. And I think for most of you, the chat will be over on the right-hand side. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, there's a participant list and a chat. So you wanna make sure that you get your full name and your full agency or district name in the chat, please, for attendance purposes. Um, one thing about the chat is you also want to make sure who you're chatting to. So if you do have, um, if you need some uh, tech support or if you just have kind of a general comment for the room, go ahead and type that in the chat, but also make sure that you are chatting to the correct people. Um, for tech support, you can just chat to the panelists and we will try to help you out with your tech um, questions as best we can. Otherwise, if you have questions for the presenter, for Elisa, as she's going through her presentation today, you want to put those in the Q&A. And the Q&A is accessible, again, from the Zoom toolbar, which you should see along the bottom of your Zoom screen. So go ahead and put those uh, questions directly related to the presentation in the Q&A. Okay. And um, if you are um, interested in resizing your window, um, you may want to, well, we'll get to that in a second, but um, to exit full screen, you should look, I believe, near the top of your screen, you should see like a green toolbar. And then to the right of that is a drop down menu, uh, view options, and from there you can adjust, uh, sorry, you can exit full screen. 
Um, if you're also having trouble seeing the slides, you might consider actually increasing the, the uh, percentage um, so you can get a better view of um, any slides that you're having trouble with. If you do want to follow along with the presenter today, um, and I know a lot of you are probably very interested in figuring out how to get started with uh, Screencastify, um, you may want to consider um, basically having two windows open. So one window will be the Zoom window, and then the second window will be your browser window. So if you have Chrome open or Safari or Firefox, um, Internet Explorer. So uh, what you wanna do is you wanna exit full screen, which we just showed you how to do, and then you wanna resize both of the windows. So basically you'll have half the size of the Zoom and half, half the size of your browser. And the way you do that is um, you wanna uh, look down at the corner of one of the windows and a new like a resize icon will appear and that way you can increase or decrease the size of the window. Okay, and that way you might be able to set them up side by side so you can watch Elisa's presentation with her slides, and then you can also be practicing along in a browser window as well. Okay, so again, just a quick recap. Again, you control your own uh, audio, so if it's too loud or not loud, all that, not loud enough, um, go ahead and adjust the volume on your system. Make sure you have the correct audio device uh, connected so you can hear. If you do want to um, add your name and agency for attendance purposes in the chat, it's gonna be off on the right-hand side and any general comments for the room can also go in the chat. If you do have questions about the presentation though, please put those in the Q&A. Again, the Q&A is accessible from the uh, Zoom toolbar, which you should see along the bottom of your screen. To exit full screen, look up near the top of your Zoom window, you should see a green, um, a green toolbar and then to the right of that a view options drop down drop down so just go ahead and open that up and then you can click on exit full screen and then again if you want to resize both your windows so that they're side by side so you can follow the presenter and also work in a uh, browser window you want to uh, just look for just um, look at one of the corners of the zoom window one of the corners of your browser window and then go ahead when the resize icon appears you want to just go ahead and pull um, or pull your uh, window to adjust to the correct size that you would like. Okay, we are recording this webinar. Um, and as many of you know, we do uh, make the recording or we're trying to make the recordings and the materials related to the recordings available as quickly as possible. We post those on the OTAN website. Um, our website is OTAN.us. And on that page, we do have a button which will lead you to the COVID-19 field support page. And that's where recordings and, and materials are currently stored. With that, I will stop sharing screen and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our presenter, Elisa, uh, Screencastify part one. Elisa, take it away. Thank you so much, Anthony. Um, please, uh, for all of you guys out there, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming to this session. I'm super excited to be doing this um, with you. Um, this is a new session for me, so um, I'm hoping that my timing will be just about right with this session. Um, quick shout out to my Garden Grove people. I see a lot of you out there, so thank you for uh, coming to the session. I'm getting a little bit nervous now. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Um, if at any time you need me to slow down or repeat something, please put it in the chat. If you have a question, um, please um, put it in the Q&A and we'll try to get it answered as quickly as possible. I do have some break slides in there too so that we can kind of catch up on some questions um, if need be. So like Anthony said, this is um, Screencastify part one. There will be a part two tomorrow. Um, today's session is really, really basic, and I know everybody says that, and that it's not, and, and things, but I'm, I'm truly thinking that this is going to be the basics, and so if you've already, if you're already using Screencastify, um, it's going to be a review, and it might be a little slow, um, but hopefully you'll still learn something new, maybe that you didn't know before. 
for those of you that you know really don't know anything about Screencastify or are somewhat familiar with it, um, we're, we're going to go through on how to install it um, and then what you can do with it and how to actually make um, a screencast. So you'll also hear me say <laughs> I use Screencastify as a verb now. I've kind of verbalized it. And so I say, I'll say, you know, like, oh, we're going to be Screencastifying, which is actually not the way you're supposed to say it. it's just a screencast but so forgive me if I, I do that it's just a bad habit so for today's agenda um, I'll go through the introduction real quick <clears throat> we'll talk about what screencastify is where is it how can I use it and then finally I'm going to give you a homework assignment dun 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 so um, after this session sometime tonight um, if you'd like, uh, I'd really like you to go ahead and do the homework, which is to create a Screencastify. And then tomorrow, um, we're, when we come back, um, if you're not crying too badly, then um, we'll go ahead and discuss about now what to do with this and more features and how to share and things like that. So tomorrow will be a little bit more advanced once you get to know how to use Screencastify and then you'll practice on your own time. All right, so here's the introduction. My name is Alisa Takeuchi. Um, I currently work at Garden Grove um, at Lincoln Education Center in Southern California. Um, I have been working for OTAN as a subject matter expert for about three years. And um, as of about five weeks ago, um, I have been a remote teacher um, in Sacramento. So I've been up in Sacramento um, since, since pretty much the beginning of our isolation. I teach beginning literacy uh, in both the morning and at night. So, um, a couple of disclaimers: um, Screencastify is not compatible with mobile devices. So, you can like like you can watch YouTube videos, you can watch videos on your phone, but you can't create anything from your phone or um, your iPad. Okay, so um, just kind of keep that in mind. And then you also need to have a Google account because Screencastify is an extension. It is a Google extension. It works with Google. So if you have a Gmail or a G Suite, then you're good to go. So we're going to take a poll real quick. <clears throat> it's just, I'm going to give it about 30 seconds and hopefully, you know, most of you can do, uh, go ahead and put your input. If not, I just want to get a kind of an idea of what's going on in the room. So if Marjorie can put up the poll. Excellent. So if you can answer uh, how much do you know about Screencastify? I'm curious if anybody's going to choose the fourth option. There should be laughter in the audience. We'll give it about 15 more seconds. I can't see the results yet, so I, I don't even know. I don't even know what they are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And how about five, four, three, two, one. We'll go ahead and close out that poll. And then let's go ahead and share um, what the results were. All right, so I know it and I use it a lot. Okay, I know it, but I don't use it. Okay, I've heard of it, but don't know it. Okay, I've never heard of it, but I just go to all of Elisa's presentations. Oh, 31 of you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, great. Well, it's good to know that um, the majority of you um, have heard of it, but you really just don't know much about it. So that's going to be great. Um, for those of you in the top two that, that do know it and you use it, or in and the, and the very top, Part. Um, again, this will probably be, you know, a little bit easy for you because you already know what's going on. Um, but hopefully you'll learn something today. Great. I'm going to close this out. <clears throat> All right. So with Screencastify, you'll need to be 
um, familiar with and comfortable with working with multiple tabs sometimes. It depends on what kind of screencast of it depends on what kind of screencast you're going to be doing. Um, but if you're going to be showing your students how to get to someplace or how to use a certain website, you're going to need to know how to work with multiple tabs. So <clears throat> I've created a screencast of how to work with multiple tabs, and I'm going to show that to you right now. An important skill to have when using Screencastify is the ability to toggle between multiple tabs at the top of your screen. This will be important because you'll want to organize your tabs in an order that's efficient for you so that your Screencastify goes more smoothly. Now, as you can see, I have multiple tabs at the top of my screen. This is what's called tab hoarding. Now, I'm hoping, no wait, I know that I am not the only one that does this. So, even though I have plenty of tabs open, I'd like to organize them so again, I can use it more efficiently. So as you can see here, I have my work email, I have a Gmail, and I have another Gmail over here, and I'd like them all together. So I'm going to click on my Gmail, and I'm going to physically drag it over to where I'd like it to go and let go. So now I have my work email, a Gmail, and another Gmail here. So again, I'd like my uh, Google Slides next to each other, so I'm going to click, drag, and let go. One more time with my Screencastify, I'm going to move my Screencastify so that they're all next to each other. And now, as you can see, I have a pretty organized order of my tabs at the top of the screen. Now, let's say um, for some reason I'd like to move my Gmail to the end. So I'm clicking and I'm moving and my hand moves and, oh, and, and then I don't know what to do and I let go and oh my gosh, where did all my tabs go? I've lost all my tabs. Don't worry, they're still there. If I move this tab right here, if I drag it down and I let go, there are all my tabs. The tab that's been moved has just been layered on top. So don't worry. You can do two things. You can exit and get rid of the tab itself, or if you want to put it back, click on the tab. Don't click in the middle. Click on the tab, put it back in the line, and then manipulate it to wherever you'd like it to go. So let's try that one more time. I have my, um, well, I don't know, my Screencastify. Oh, I'm going to move this back. I'm going to move this back. And I look, and oh, oh, and now it's gone. Okay. So all you need to do is click on the tab itself, move it, and look, it's right back in the line of tabs. And I can let go and put it right back. You're not, you haven't lost anything. Okay. So um, that's how you go ahead and manipulate between tabs. And again, this will be important for your Screencastify. So let's go ahead and practice. If you're on Zoom right now, you may have to exit full screen and you might have some tabs behind it. If you don't, you might want to open some tabs up and then just practice toggling back and forth you know, and drop them where you'd like them to go or even practice moving it and then re-putting it on the tab line. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to practice that and then we'll come back. Okay, so um, just like the video said, we're going to give you just a, you know, like a minute or so to kind of practice between toggling back and forth between tabs. Um, so if you're having any trouble or if you know, if you're just not going to do it right now, that's okay. Come back to this later on and, um, and practice when you're at home. I mean, sorry, when you're uh, after the session. <clears throat> Do we have any um, questions or comments in the chat? Alisa, um, yeah. just a, a couple of questions. Um, sure. Uh, in the very, very beginning, mm -hmm. you mentioned that um, Screencastify is not compatible with smartphones. So can you clarify, do you mean um, creating Screencastifies, viewing Screencastifies? So uh, yeah. what exactly is the not compatible part? Great, great question. Yeah, um, screen, you cannot create a Screencastify from your phone. The, when you try to go and upload the app, it will say it's for desktop only. So, um, but as far as if uh, to create a video, it is, it's like a YouTube video. So if you can view, view if you can view uh, YouTube videos, or you know videos on your phone, then you can watch a screencastify. Video. Okay, 
So just to be clear, so you yeah. can view the Screencastify videos from a mobile device. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, great. And then uh, is there any com are there any comments about whether people are doing okay with the moving of the tabs? Oh, everybody said that they love you, Elisa, but I don't know about the tabs. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, okay, thank you wait. for coming to my session. The Hold end. on. So there is a question. <laughs> sure. A question. When I tried to practice tabs, I lost my entire Zoom screen. Okay. So uh, what you might want to do is look at the bottom of your screen, the, I mean, the bottom of your monitor, and you should see some um, icons at the bottom. And I'm with fingers crossed, I'm hoping you'll see one that looks like a, a, cam a, a camcorder, like a video. And that will be Zoom. And then if you click on that, Zoom will pop up. Fingers crossed. OK. And um, Alisa, would you be able to, um, I'm just looking at a few things. So folks, just remember, if you do have a question about anything, please make sure that ends up in the Q&A. Um, it's a little hard to go between the Q&A and chat for um, if people have questions. So. Um, Alisa, would it be possible to do a demo on your um, computer with tabs just sure. to show people? Yeah, okay. let me um, go ahead and I will stop sharing. And then I will, wait, is that right? No, that's not right. <laughs> I need to share my screen still, right? <laughs> yeah, you can share your desktop. You just yeah. want to. Yeah. Okay, so let me, share, sorry, let me share my screen again. All right, and I need to get out of my presentation. Okay, so um, as you can see, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six tabs open, um, and one of them is the presentation, and two of them are Gmails and Zoom. And what I want to do is I want to move my Gmails over. So I'm going to click on my Gmail, and I'm going to physically hold and drag and move it. And now I have a Gmail here and a Gmail here. If I want to move my, my Zoom you know, out of the way, I'm going to click and drag it. And I'm going to move it to the end, wherever I need it to be. So it opens that tab as well. So as soon as you click on that tab, it opens that tab. And I can go back to my presentation. Now, I think what somebody was saying was when they did that, they lost their Zoom. And down here at the bottom, if you can see, I have some um, icons down here at the bottom you'll see that I have one that looks like a, a camera. And then that would be my Zoom. Okay. So um, I, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, um, if not, we can go back through that again. Um, there's going to be a time um, toward the a little bit in a little later that we're going to practice that. Okay, Elisa. Yeah, I think that was very helpful. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay. Let me go back to presenting. All right, so we talked about this. Okay, so now for um, this session or, you know, kind of in, in, in any session, because I've been to so many of them, just like you, I was telling, uh, we had a staff meeting last week and I was telling our director, like, it's so funny because I go to these sessions and I see the participants and it's like this cult, it's an OTAN cult that we all kind of follow all the sessions and we see that the same names over and over again because we're just so hungry to learn new things. And, um, so with that, it, it's, it's interesting to, to see the same names over and over again because we're all learning. And what happens is that sometimes we go down the rabbit hole because we learn something and then, um, but in order to use it or to utilize it or to make it better, you need to know something else. So now I have to learn how to use that. So it's kind of with Screencastify is the same way. It's like Screencastify, you can use it all on its own as long as you know how to email and copy a link no problem. But it's also extremely useful if you um, have a classroom, a Google Classroom. And now you're like, oh, that sounds so interesting. But how do I get a Google Classroom? <laughs> and then so that's another session you'd have to go to. And then um, you can also upload it to your YouTube channel. And you're like, oh, I would love my students to, you know, ha watch my videos on a YouTube channel. But how do I get to a YouTube channel? So again, it's like, it's like one after the other after the other. And so as we're going through this, um, start thinking about how you would like to use Screencastify and, and if there are 
other tools that you'll need to know in order to use it. But again, as long as you can record a video and share a link in an email or remind or something, it's as easy as that. Don't worry. Oops, I'm sorry. sorry. An important skill to have when using screen. All right. So for all these presentations, what I was starting to say was, as we're going through these, <clears throat> if you're if you feel comfortable enough to multitask and work at the same time. So as the presenter is talking and giving an instruction, you can work and do it at the same time. Feel free to do it because um, that way you're, you're right there. You're doing it at the same time. Um, but it can get a little hectic because if, you know, if we're going a little too fast and, you know, you're left behind and things like that. So the ideal situation is to have maybe a, a computer or a laptop and then a monitor, an external monitor. It's not two computers. It's one computer and then an external monitor so that you have um, your, your whatever's on this computer can also be viewed in another computer. So you could take one of those tabs and you can move it to another computer. So if you have that, you already know this. Um, if you don't have an external monitor, uh, don't stress out because um, that's something else beyond, a little bit more advanced. The other thing is to have two computers. So for me, I have a laptop and I have a Chromebook. So I have two separate computers. So I can watch the Zoom on one and I can practice whatever they're doing on another. They are two completely you know, different computers. Um, so I would just have Zoom on one and whatever I'm practicing on the other. The other thing would be the phone and the computer. So now, like I said, so Screencastify, you can't do this on your phone. So you would need to watch the Zoom on your phone, or if you're already doing that, if you're watching this presentation on your phone, if you have a laptop or a computer, um, you can open it and practice what we're doing off to the side. So you watch on your Zoom, I mean, you watch on your phone, and then you practice on another computer. That's another option. Um, or you can do what Anthony was talking about earlier, where you have one computer, like Alisa, I just have one computer, that's it. No problem. Then what you can do is you can have two screens on at the same time. So remember how we manipulated those tabs? You can go ahead and manipulate a tab and then actually move it over. So you have the zoom on one side and then practice on the other side. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to exit this presentation. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So let me exit. Okay, so <clears throat> here I have my Screencastify, um, my presentation, that, that would be your Zoom, and I'm moving it off the, the trail of tabs, and it's its own separate entity. Remember we talked about that? I'm going to, so there's a couple of different ways. I know Anthony does it a, a, a particular way. This seems easiest for me, but I take it off of Maximize, and then I go to my Corners and I can resize my screen. So you see, I still have my screencast, I still have my presentation here. I have my tabs up here, okay? I can move this, I can make it bigger, so it's about half my screen. Now, I want to practice what Elisa is saying. So you're gonna make a new tab, a brand new tab, pull it off. Sorry, my computer's going a little slow. Exit maximize, and you can resize this one too. Okay. All right. So now, oh my God, what happened? Alisa, I lost the presentation. Where did it go? Here are my tabs. Here's my new tab. What happened to that presentation? It's down here. You have a whole other toolbar down here, down at the very bottom of your screen. You have a whole other toolbar that you can choose from and here it is. I pulled that off. Okay, so if you've lost your tab, if you've lost anything, it's not gone forever unless you've actually exited out of it, it's probably going to be somewhere up at the tabs at the top or somewhere down here at the bottom. Okay, so as long as you didn't actually ex, you know, exit out, but it's hidden somewhere, it's there somewhere. Okay, so now I have two screens. I have Elisa's Zoom presentation on one, and now I can practice whatever she's talking about here. Okay, so Anthony, do you see if we need to repeat that or 
give it a minute or so? Um, I don't see any comments yet. So okay, I think let, me, let me give it a moment. Let me give you a minute just to figure it out and kind of absorb. And okay, and this is only if you want to, you guys, you don't need to. You're more than welcome just to sit back, relax, and just watch. It's not a problem. Everything we're doing here, you can just watch. And then later on, um, I'm going to give you the copy of this presentation. And then you can go back through. And I have a couple of slides, <clears throat> excuse me, that are cheat sheets. You can take a photo of them and you'll see when it is. And when you go after this presentation, when you're like, calm again, <laughs> then you can go to your computer and, and do it on your own time. No problem. This isn't a you must do it at the same time type deal. Okay, Elisa, actually we have sure. Uh, now we have a couple of requests. Maybe you could just show how to split the screen in two again. Okay, yep, I'm going to exit. So I'm exiting out. And this is my way of doing it. Um, and I think Anthony, you might have a different way of doing it. And, and it all works as long as it works. Um, so I'm going to exit out. Okay, I'm going to go back to where I was. So this was, okay, so this is my presentation. It's within my tabs. This is normal. This is like how it is when you open up thing. I want to split my screen so that I see the zoom and I see I can make a practice at the same time. So for you, you're going to find your tab that has the zoom presentation, this right here, and pull it off. Okay, if it turns full screen, that's okay. Min uh, make it less than full screen. Grab the corner. Make sure, see how you're kind of close to that X? You might want to do a different corner <laughs> if you're a little bit worried. As long as you have that, um, those arrows that are pointing diagonally. Okay. If you're a little bit worried about getting too close to that X, you know, X then go to another corner. Any corner works. Any corner works. Okay, and you can resize it any way you like. Now I have the presentation. I have the zoom on one side, and now I need another one to practice with. So I'm going to open up a new tab, pull it off, pull it off my main tab line, exit full screen, and resize it. Okay. So what happens though is when I do that, sorry, when I do that, my other, my zoom went away. Oh my God, Elisa, my zoom is gone. I don't know where my zoom is. I see zoom up here, that's not it. Yeah, I wanna come down here, down to the bottom of the tray. Okay, you're gonna probably look for zoom like this, but I, I have to look for my presentation, so here. So look for your zoom and then it should come up. And then you'll have two screens and you can manipulate the size, however you know, big or small you want it. Okay, so play around with that um, as you're going through your screens. And if it's too much, now look, I have all this back here. I've got my two screens up here. If it's too much, you can always minimize this. Minimize here. It's going down, it went down to the bottom of my tray and now I have just my desktop. So it's not so, 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 you know, so, so much. Okay, and then I have my two slide, I have my side to side again. If you're in your house right now or wherever you're at watching this and you're trying to do it and you're crying, don't worry about it. Just stop. <laughs> you can just watch the watch the um, presentation. It is not a problem for you just to watch. If it's just too much for you to handle, it's not a problem at all. All right. How are we doing? Have I lost anybody? Am I, am I down to 10 people now? I'm wiping away the last of my tears, but I think we're, we're good to continue. So, <laughs> Yeah, if I make OTAN people cry, then, you know, please, everybody else, I, I apologize. <laughs> 
and we, you know, hopefully at the end of this too, we'll have some time to practice. Um, like I said, I don't know exactly the timing of this presentation, but, um, but hopefully if there's extra time at the end, then we can go ahead and practice. <laughs> All right. Alisa? Yes. Sorry, um, just no to, um, we should clarify because I think this question came up or a, a few folks have the question. Sure. So it does depend on, you were talking about the minimizing the window. So again, it does depend on whether you're on a Windows machine or a Mac, right? Oh. So Windows machine that Alisa just showed us, minimize will be in the upper right corner. Mm -hmm. Mac users minimizes in the upper left corner. Okay, so if you're not seeing it on the right, it may be because you're on a Mac and it's actually over on the left. And so. I think on Macs, they're um, circles, not, yes. not squares. Yeah, I, so I don't use Mac. So I don't, it, like things like that, thank you so much for saying it because I, it doesn't even come into my brain because I don't use um, Macs at all. So thank you for that. Um, all right, so we're gonna take another poll. <laughs> if you're still hanging in there with me. Um, if Marjorie can pull up that poll for me, we're going to see uh, what, how you are going to be utilizing this presentation. How will you be involved? I'll give you guys a minute. I just kind of want to gauge and see how, where we're at as far as who's using what. Maybe 10 more seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and see the results. See where, where are we at? Okay, so, um, all right, so 13 of you have external monitor, great. Um, I hope that you, I, I'm sure you're probably familiar with throwing one of those tabs into your other external monitor and that way you can work side by side. Uh, two computers, great. So we've got a little gamut of everything. So side by side, hopefully the side by side people that you were okay getting side by side. Um, and for those of you that are wa just watching, great, not a problem. Um, just go ahead, sit back, relax, and just absorb the information. <laughs> All right, let me close that up. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about what is it? What is Screencastify? And um, what I just did, what I did up here at the top is I, here's that verb again, I Screencastified, I Screencastified a video about Screencastify. Um, and it is a freemium. It is free, the, there's a basic um, edition and it's free. And what they've just done recently, I think it was February 4th or something, they extended what their free products were. So a lot of the stuff that was for pay is actually free now. And um, so that's pretty great. The only things is that, okay, so they, you have unlimited amount of videos that you can make, which was not the case before. And um, the only exception, the only thing is that the videos have to be less than five minutes, which is fine. Um, you know, it depends on, I guess, what you're going to screencast, but I have found that the shorter the videos, the better, especially if you're using them for stu with students. You, you need to make videos that are very short, um, one to two minutes, maybe three minutes, again, depending on what it is that you know you're trying to show them or demonstrate or teach um, because you know we've we've been there before where you know we've tried to watch a video and it's you know especially an instruction video and it's super long and your attention span starts wavering especially now that we're at home so um so that's fine um there is okay so you can get a, a premium and they've lowered so for educators it's $29 a year for everybody else that's not an educator it's $49 a year so that's a pretty big discount for educators and the bonuses for that is that there's more tools that you can use the tools that you get for free great that's all I use I don't have a paid subscription and, and I'm fine with that. Um, maybe later on I'll, I'll splurge on the $30 and see what, you know, what else I can do. Um, but the other thing is that you have unlimited time. You're not, you're not requ you know, required to stay at, at five minutes. You can make a video that's 10 minutes or 15 minutes or, or longer if you want. So that's, um, 
those are the benefits of having the premium. But again, I only use the free version and I've, I've loved it so far. So I'm going to show you the video real quick of the introduction to Screencastify. Not too long ago, the average classroom had one instructor teaching at one pace, in one style, to many different students. Now that's starting to change. Thanks to increased access to technology, like Chromebooks and Google Apps for Education, educators are empowered to teach in more flexible ways that fit the needs of all their students. But as much as these tools have reshaped learning, they can't replace the most important part of teaching, the teacher. Screencastify allows teachers to make sure that learning is personal and human in a digital classroom. Whether it's recording instructional videos to meet the varied needs of students, delivering richer feedback, or allowing students to demonstrate learning in new ways. There's no limit to what you can accomplish with Screencastify. Okay, so again, so this was coming from a kind of a K through 12 kind of um, commercial, but uh, again, Screencastify isn't just, um, let me show you how to do something. It's not always just tutorials. You can use Screencastify to give video feedback um, or you can have your students, if your students are using um, Google, then they can give video feedback, whether they liked your lesson or I have a question or something. So instead of just typing it out or, and, or if they have uh, if their skills or if they want to practice speaking or having a conversation, they can actually um, make screencasts themselves and give it back to you. So how cool was that? Is that like if you have some sort of assignment and there were some mistakes and maybe they tend to make mistakes, the same mistakes over and over again, and you made a little some video for them that's personal. Hey Van, great sentence. Um, you know, don't forget the S, you know, on the verb uh, when you write your sentence. Don't forget the period at the end. And then you're, you're actually giving them feedback and they're seeing your face and saying it as if they were in the classroom. So, you know, things like that, you can use, that's what's great about Screencastify. So in the chat, I'm gonna give you guys about a minute. I want you to write in the chat, not the Q&A, in the chat, how would you like to use Screencastify with your students and or your colleagues? So go ahead and type, you know, what, what do you think? What do you think you would like to use it for? Now that you kind of have an idea of what it's about, how would you like to use it? Annalisa, while folks mm -hmm. are working on that, um, yes. I just want to re remind people again, um, if you do have questions for the pre for Alisa or the presentation, please put them in the Q&A. Um, so we aren't, we aren't, um, if people are raising their hands or if they, ask, you know, if they hit that raise hand icon, we um, don't acknowledge that in basically. <laughs> so make sure to put your question in the chat, uh, sorry, in the Q&A, or if you need tech support or other support, just go ahead and put that in the chat. Great, yeah, thank you. So I'm looking at the chat and oh my gosh, this is amazing. Some of your, your ideas, some of you still don't have an idea, have a clue, that's okay, no problem. You're, you're still just kind of absorbing, you know, the, the whole what is Screencastify, you know, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but other, you know, some of you are saying that um, you would like to use them as um, to, for reading books. That would be great. You know, you have an online, um, you know, a little book club or an online story time. Um, vocabulary lessons. Uh, that's what I did mine. I had a, I had a listening test and I recorded myself as if I was giving the, the spelling test and then they watched it as a YouTube video and they took the test on a piece of paper. Uh, distance learning, a lot of how to's, right? So if you're still having trouble, if you're still having difficulty or challenges getting your students on Zoom, um, you could make a, an instructional video on how students can join Zoom. The, the hard thing with, with like these, these um, conferencing rooms, um, Zoom or Google Meet or Google Hangouts, it's that there's so many devices, there's so many different devices that there's so many different ways that 
troubleshooting can go awry. And, and that's really tough. Um, yeah, it's a lot of viewers slideshows. Okay, we're going to we're going to talk about that tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to learn today is all about just how do I make a screencast? Yeah, how do I use screencastify and and then tomorrow is what do I do with it now? Okay. So if you can get past the today's where you feel comfortable about actually creating a screencast, then tomorrow is where our, like all that magic happens. All right, that's great. Thank you so much, you guys, for your um, your input, your your answers. Alisa? Yes. Okay, before you continue, can we sure. um, circle back just a couple of questions again about the pricing that you talked about? Okay. So um, what about students using Screencastify? Would they be able to sign up for a free account as well? Yes, yes. Students can um, sign up for a free account just like you do just it's it, the process is still the same and I have a um, I'll, I, I can show you that later too um, the process is still the same except where it, there's a screen that will come up and I'll say uh, it doesn't say it like this but I'll say like what are you and it's just like educator um, student business person you know it gives you some options they would just choose student now it doesn't really matter I mean they could say educator you could say student but what happens is that any kind of like um, new information that relates to that particular topic that you chose will get to you so if you chose education or educator um, if they have new developments that they think would be beneficial for educators they'll send it to you but if you chose student then maybe they'll say hey you know maybe they'll give some little emails or something about, about student use um, so that's the only reason but I mean anybody could choose anything as far as the uh, the pricing goes the the $29 um, I haven't done it yet, so I don't know, but I assume that when you sign up for an account, you choose if you're, if you select that you're an educator, and then I'm not sure how they verify it, you know, if they have to, you know, if you have to verify it somehow, um, maybe with your school email address or something like that, and that's how they can tell whether or not that you're, you should get the $29 price or the $49 price. So, okay, yeah, we did uh, have a question from somebody who works at a library, oh, uh -huh. um, not a school setting, but you it sounds like they probably could still sign up with um, as an educator and get those benefits. Yeah, sure. The, with the free account, you can sign up as anybody you want. Yeah, yeah. The only reason why they would ask you, or the only reason why they ask you is to kind of vet you into what kind of um, services of emails they can send you to help you with that particular field. So yeah, if you work in the library or anybody can choose educator, it's a free account, it doesn't matter. But if you want the $29 discount, then you're probably gonna have to prove that you're an educator in some capacity. Even if you work in the library, I'm sure you could probably just let them know that you're in education and they would probably still give you, I can't imagine that they wouldn't, but I, I don't know for sure. Okay. Great. Great. Anything else? Um, we have some other questions, but let's see what the next part of your presentation is. Okay, great. Um, has there been any comments about, oh my gosh, you're going too fast, or she's da da da, pacing? Uh, I think the pacing is okay. So. Okay. All right. Just let me know, guys, if, uh, if you think that I'm going too fast. All right. So, where is it? <clears throat> So the easiest thing to do is just to go to screencastify.com. So if this is where this is where the screen the the split screen comes in. If you're working with another computer, if you're working with an external monitor, if you're working with side by side views, if you want to go to screencastify.com, you should see this homepage. And as we're doing these steps, I'll give you just you know a few seconds to kind of see. Now, I already had this installed when I took the screenshot. So of course, mine says already installed. But yours should say something about install or get it or go to. <clears throat> so screencastify.com. OK, now I made a cheat sheet for you. So those of you that are, are just watching, or, or if you're trying to, you can take a picture of this screen right now, and this is the step-by-step -step process of how to um, open your account. 
I went through and I opened a new account and every step I took, I made sure that I, I documented it. And I have pictures, we'll go through it also, but this is just like the cheat sheet. So if you would like to do this later on, you don't have to go through all of the slides again. You could just use this or have it on your phone and have your phone next to your computer and then work on your computer. So Elisa, are you going to address the um, Chrome issue? Because some people are saying that um, it says that to add it in Chrome. Yes. And so okay. it, like we were talking about, um, you're going to, you need to have a Google account. Right, so at some point you're going to have to, you're, you will have to sign into your Google account. Now it will come, it, it's in step number four. So if you don't have a Google account, whether it's a Gmail account or your edu or .net, your school G Suite account, then to use Screencastify, you're going to have to open one. All right, so did everybody take a picture of this that wants to take a picture of it? I'm going to move, I'm going to change slides in five, four, three. So two, Lisa. One. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, so can we, let's be clear again. So um, if, if I have a Google account, uh -huh. can, I, can I open my Google account in any browser? So on Firefox, can I be in my Google account to do this, or does it need to be Chrome and Google account? Um, that's a good question because I don't, I only use Chrome. So I, I'm not, I don't want to be a hundred, I don't want to say for sure, but if you're on Firefox or, or such, yeah, I would open up. My understanding is that if you open up Gmail, your Chrome account opens at the same time. Now, I don't know if that's true or not in, in Firefox. So I would follow the prompts. If you're in Firefox, then, you know, go to Screencast, you know, it's, it's pretty um, user friendly. If you go to screencastify.com and you try to add it, add to Chrome, it'll tell you whether or not you need to sign into your Chrome account or not. And if it does, do it. And if it doesn't, just keep going down the, you know, just keep following the steps until it says sign into your Google account, which means you know, sign into your Gmail. Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, I like questions like that when it's about other browsers or other devices because it opens my mind because I forget that there are other things besides, <laughs> that, there, that there are other browsers besides Chrome, which is for me is unheard of. All right, I'm ready to change. If everybody's uh, ready to change, I'm going to switch the slide. All right, so here we go. Here are the steps. Same thing that I just had in the list is, is broken down. So screencastify.com. Oh, here it is. I opened up a new account because <laughs> I wanted to show you exactly. So it should say out of Chrome. And then you're going to click on add to Chrome. So here I am on my G Suite's account. I originally made a, an account on my Gmail, and so now I switched over to my G Suite, and this is what this is what showed. Add Screencastify. Please add the extension, otherwise you won't be able to use it. As soon as you do that, you should see a little arrow with the camcorder on the top right-hand corner of your screen. If you see that, that means Screencastify has been uh, installed onto Chrome. This is where all your extensions, anytime you open up any extension, uh, you install any inst extensions, this is where it'll show up. So if you see this in, on your computer or on your device, you're good to go. And this is where the magic is. You never have to open Screencastify.com again. Everything will just be click on this and you start going. It's so, so convenient and so easy. It'll ask you to sign in. Now, there will be a little um, default at the bottom to say automatically save videos to Google Drive. You definitely want that. 
if it, it should be defaulted already to the on switch but if for some reason you accidentally clicked it or it's on the the left you want to make it to the right that means every uh, screencast you create will automatically be added to your drive without you having to do anything you don't have to click save you don't have to do anything it automatically goes to your drive you always want to allow for the positives okay so it needs to know you have a camera and a microphone and if you want to use the drawing and annotation tools you want to say yes And I'm hoping as I'm going through these that you're seeing the same thing if you haven't already gone ahead. But as I'm doing this, this is exactly what I saw when I opened up my account. So I hope that as you're going through opening up your account, if you're doing this, that you're seeing the same thing. So this right here, the read and change all your data, I looked it up because I was looking at this going, ooh, and Melinda always says, you know, choose the positive, you know, you know, uh, apply to the positive. But I was reading this going, I'm not sure. So I went to look it up, I Googled it. And it, what it is, is that it's saying that anytime if you're, um, if you need, if you want to screencast a, a website or anything, what it needs to do is you're saying you're having permission to use that website. Not so much that you're stealing it from them, but that yes, you are using external websites and that, um, and that when you save it onto your drive, when the screencast is saved to your drive, that's the, where the um, changing it is. It's reading and changing. So you allow it, otherwise you can't use it. Uh, for me, it asked me to use my microphone again. I don't know why, and it may not for you, but it did for me, so I just said allow. And then here's that part where it talks about uh, IMA. And you can choose anything you want, but if you choose the educator, um, anytime there's any kind of new, and a, you know, new tool or new things that they think educators might benefit from, they'll go ahead and notify you with that. Your students would obviously you know, choose student, but this is the free account again. So um, you know, it's up to you. You can, you can use it any way you want. And then it'll ask you, where do you work? And I always like have a tough time with this because usually it's these three, these options. It's either grade school, like K through 12, or it's college and university. And I work for an adult school, but we're, our adult school is um, associated with the K through 12. So I'm always like wondering, should I just choose, you know, grade school, you know, because like if it's a discount or something, but um, I think for this, I just, I chose other. That was my decision, but it's totally up to you. And again, I don't think it really matters one way or the other. Maybe just if they have some tools that are more beneficial for K through 12, they'll, they'll send it to you versus college and university. They, you know, they'll send it more higher level information. And then voila, you're done. And if you're on the screen or if you've done it already, little confetti. I tried to screenshot it, but it was too, <laughs> I tried to do a screenshot, but it went too fast. There's a little confetti and they, you know, like it's like a little party and they're like, ah, oh, congratulations, good job. All right, so the hard part is done. I mean, literally that is the hardest part of this whole thing, which is awesome. Um, if you are having any troubles getting to this stage right here, um, please, um, you know, ask a question in the Q&A or at the end, um, you know, we can uh, go through some of the, we can troubleshoot some of the things or afterwards you can email me. <clears throat> Lisa? Yes. Okay. So on that point, I do think that some, I think people got tripped up at a few different points along okay. the way. Okay. So, is there a way that maybe you could go back and just do a quick recap of the steps again? Absolutely. And then I think that'll help with some of the questions that have come up. Okay. So uh, the step-by-step -step ones or the whole list? I think... Um, Here's the yes. list. Yeah. So okay. I think let's, let's start from here. And if you could just okay. do, again, a quick recap of the steps in case anybody got stuck along the way. Okay, so the first one is you're going to go, you know, you have your new tab open and you are going to go to screencastify.com. And then once you get to screencastify, um, in fact, let me go step by step. I'll do this one. So once you get to screencastify.com, you should see this at the top of your screen. 
you're going to want to add to Chrome. And again, uh, I was already on Chrome, <clears throat> excuse me, so uh, I might not have some of these steps that maybe some of you are going through if you were using Firefox or, um, you know, some other browser. I think, I think my, if it's, if, if you can, okay, my recommendation, if it's, if it's, if it's okay, if you're allowed to, if you're, if you know you're going to use a Google product, I would start with Google, the Chrome browser, just start there because it seems to be that it's kind of just an easier path to take. Um, but if you're, if you're on a device where you, you can't help it, you have to use Safari or you have to use Firefox, then there might be some extra steps always when you're using a, a Chrome, a Google product. So, and, and I don't use those other browsers, so I, do, I, don't, use, I don't ever um, include them in my slides. So I apologize for that if, if you're having a little bit of difficulty if you're using another browser. But if you're using Chrome and um, you're following these steps, it sh they should be similar. And then add the extension. Again, it is an extension. Uh, some, um, okay, if for some reason you are having trouble with the, the webpage, the screencastify.com, you can always go to the Google Play Store and type in Screencastify and then add it, that, install it that way also. I think that's the way I did it my first time I did it. I went to the Play Store, I typed in Screencastify, is it install, and then I went through all the same steps but this was through the website. So it, that might be one of the problems too. If you're having any issues with the website, screencastify.com, then go to the Play Store and see if that helps you. A different way to get to the same result. If everything is okay and it was installed properly, you should see the little arrow with the camcorder picture at the top of your screen on the right-hand side. If you ever, like if you've installed it and you're like, this is not for me, I don't really want it, you can always remove it, just like any extension. So sign in with your Google account, automatically save the Google Drive, permissions for the camera and the annotation tools, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Allow, allow, if that happens again, I don't know if, if it will for you or not. And then choose how you want to be um, known in your profile. And then what level you teach. And then voila. Did that help most people or are there still some issues? Yeah, Lisa, I think this was very helpful. It does sound like that there are a few people still who are having trouble. Okay. Um, but perhaps, browser, yeah, I mean, one possible, if um, you can always come to the OTAN office hour and mm -hmm. we can try to help troubleshoot um, that, but I think in the interest of time, Elise, I think, why don't you continue okay. and then if, if if people are still having trouble, then maybe at this point, you know, just uh, watch Elisa's presentation and then maybe we can um, circle back to some of those issues near the end. Yeah, so keep your questions or your comments and stuff and then we'll, um, we'll circle back. Yeah. All right, so when you finish, they're gonna give you the option down at the bottom and it has some tours. So I recommend that you do take the tour. Um, hopefully you're not doing, well, I mean, you might be doing it right now, that's fine. But after this webinar, you can always go back and do it too, okay? And um, this is actually a little video that um, I did, uh, I screencast, <laughs> so we can actually see this one right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's take, a, <laughs> let's take a small break, yeah? Let's take a deep breath. Now, let me show you how I use Screencastify um, in my presentation. So hopefully this will work. Okay, so let's take a deep breath. <sighs> And one more time. <sighs> Too much information. We need oxygen to the brain. Let's keep going.
Okay, so basically I took a, a very quick screencast and I just inserted it into my presentation. So we are virtually walking through uh, on a path in nature and we're just taking in the oxygen <laughs> because we've got a lot of information so far. So that is one of the ways that you can incorporate Screencastify into a presentation and it's very, very easy. It's very user friendly um, from a Google, pres uh, Google Slides. All right, so here is the Screencastify. This is what um, Screencastify gives. Uh, this is the video that they made. Screencastify is a really simple way to record screencasts from right within your Chrome browser. Once you've installed our extension, click our icon and choose whether you want to record your browser tab entire desktop, or just your webcam. Turn on your microphone if you want to narrate over your recording, and choose if you want to embed your webcam to add a personal touch. Once you're ready, click record, and lights, camera, action. Spice up your screencast with our annotation tools. For example, shine a spotlight on your mouse to direct your viewer's eye, or draw on your recording with our pen tool. Toggle your webcam on and off during your recording and change the location, size, and shape of your webcam. Once you're finished, click our icon again and click the stop button. Your video will automatically save to your Google Drive. Then you can rename your recording share it either by grabbing the Google Drive link or by publishing your video directly to YouTube. Our premium subscribers can crop and trim their videos, as well as export them as an MP4 or animated GIF. Thanks for watching and enjoy creating awesome videos with Screencast. All right, so as you can see, like when I was making a video about the video, the quality like lessened. Um, so that's something that you might wanna keep in mind. If you're trying to show a video of a video, um, then it might be a little difficult. It, you know, it's not gonna be as clear, uh, you know, the audio and the visual will not be as clear as if you make one yourself. Um, so that was just, uh, that's the tour that they give you when you, this right here, oops. this right here, that was that two minute video. So go ahead and watch that again and it'll show you some different ways that you can use it, um, which we'll talk more of tomorrow. So as soon as I finished that screencast that I just made, this comes up on my screen. So again, I wanted to make sure that I took a screenshot of everything that you would see when you make your first screencast. So, um, you could say show me around and you take a little tour and it's going to show you all the different elements. Please, 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 I, you know, I encourage you to do it because it will show you all the different tools and all the different, you know, settings and things that you'll need to know or that you'll want to know. Um, this, as soon as you finish, as soon as you hit stop record, this shows up. It has already been um, saved into Drive. You didn't even have to do anything. No, no clicking save, no anything. It automatically just gets there. The only thing that you'll need to want to do is you'll want to change the um, title so that you can um, associate which screencast is what. Sharing options. Um, so here you have your different sharing options. And when I click on more options down here at the bottom, there's more options. This is what comes up. So here's the more options. So you can share to a classroom. You can publish to YouTube. Again, you'll need to have to tab. If, um, if you were going to uh, show different websites, you don't want to click that. This would be if you're only on one tab. Um, 
a desktop, that means you can go from tab to tab or take, you know, get, get off your, you know, just show them how to get onto the internet or, you know, things like that. Or you can do your webcam only, which means basically a selfie video. So if you're going to give feedback, maybe, um, you know, you could just do a quick screencast and say, wow, that was a great job on your homework. Um, don't forget or, you know, remember uh, periods at the end of your sentences or whatever it is. So you have your choices. It mine says webcam not detected here. Yours will say webcam, but I'm on, I was on a device that doesn't have a webcam. So that's why it says that. It automatically defaults to three seconds, your countdown. It'll say, you'll hear it go tink, 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 and then you know to start recording. You can change this to uh, five seconds or 10 seconds. You can make it longer if you want, but it defaults to three seconds. There's a, a drawing toolbar that comes out on the bottom left hand side. You can toggle this on and off if you don't want it. If you're not going to use it and it's in the way, just toggle this off. You can um, take it off. Oops. And then you're going to hit record. Okay. When you hit record, it will ask you to click on the screen. It's like, it's kind of like making sure, are you sure this is the screen you want to share? And you click on it and it highlights and you say, yes, share. All right, so now you're going to listen and sometimes on one of my computers, it is, does the three, you'll see three, two, one, and one of them, I can only hear it. It goes three, it goes dink, 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 and then you're on air, okay? So this is when you start recording. Whether it be a website, you know, click on, click on the plus sign or, you know, this is O-N. A-I-R, you know, whatever it is you're trying to demonstrate to whoever the audience is. When you're finished, when you're done, you're going to click on the same icon, the same thing that you started your video, you're going to click it one more time and hit stop. Okay. You can also customize when you want your video to stop. If you don't want to go over two minutes, um, then you can also um, click, you can customize your time that it finishes. The only thing is that you have to be mindful of how much time has gone by. So I have not done that, but it, it's there if you want it. All right, once you've stopped, uh, stopped the recording, your, you'll start seeing your video automatically. It'll, it'll show right here. The only thing you're going to have to do is there's, it'll say unmute. Just click unmute and you can hear it also. So it'll start automatically. It's saved to drive. Didn't have to do anything. And then all you have to do is um, click unmute and you'll see your video. Okay. If you want to go, if you want to know where it is, or if you want to go back to it later on, if you've gone out of Screencastify and later on you want to find your um, video, you go to your drive. And then you're going to, they automatically created a folder for you called Screencastify. You did not have to do anything. You don't have to make the folder. You don't have to save anything into the folder. Everything you record gets saved into the Screencastify folder. So you open up your folder and all your screencasts are in there. Um, let me stop real quick. Um, how are we doing? Um, how are we doing on people? Comments, questions? Oh, Lisa, let's see. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of questions, so let's see if we can address some of them. Okay. Um, there was a question that just came in. Which options do you use? Browser tab, desktop, or webcam? Okay. Not sure. Okay. So it depends on what it is that I want to record. So the one, the, the little video that I made of us uh, taking a deep breath, that was the webcam. You only saw me. Right, you didn't see my cam my computer or anything on my computer. You saw me, so it's like taking a selfie video. So I didn't have to take out before. I was making selfie videos with my phone, or with my Chromebook, but now I could just do it with Screencastify. And I hit webcam, and I said, "Okay, let's take a breath," you know, and da da da. And I stopped it, and I imp I put it in the slides. So that's webcam. Um, browser tab means that I'm only going to show one tab. Whatever it is I'm doing, it's on one tab. I'm not manipulating between tabs. Desktop would be if I'm going to get off the internet or if I'm going to use multiple tabs, that's what I would use that. 
So hopefully then, that helped a little bit. Okay, and then um, maybe you just address this, but is the desktop cho choice just for the entire desktop or could it be set up for a, a region of the desktop? Um, um, okay, so I think with, okay, okay, so answer number one, the whole desktop. And then answer number two, if you have premium, I think you can crop, you can manipulate what is shown on the screen. So you can crop, it'll show your whole screen and then you can crop it to say, hey, I only want the students to see this part of my screen and not the rest of it. But I think that's a premium feature. So for right now, for the free version, um, they'll see your whole desktop and we're gonna talk about that, making sure that, we'll talk about that, um, about making sure what you have on your desktop and things. Okay, and then regarding the options piece, mm -hmm. um, switch it on or leave it off? Options, um, which options? Um, system audio, show webcam preview. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm, this, um, no. Options. So sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling back because I wanna see what, what it was that was being asked. Options. Um, if the person can um, just clarify what, what part that was, if it's the, the recording itself or the after I've recorded. Um, then I can answer that better because I'm not too sure where they're at, what, what, where the question is. Okay. Um, okay, so this person said, um, I was following along but lost how to start the recording. Every time I click on the okay. Screencastify icon, I am shown the options, but I can't figure out how to get it to record. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to do it right now. So I have Screencastify. I, I hope you guys can see this. I'm... Um, you can see the Screencastify right here. I'm gonna click on Screencastify. Oh, sorry, my computer's slow. It's coming. All right, so here's that screen. Hopefully you see the same screen. And then it's, your choices are browser tab, desktop tab, or webcam only. So I if I did webcam only, you would see me, but you wouldn't see me because I'm on a computer that doesn't have a webcam, sorry. My desktop. Okay, you would see everything. I can manipulate or a browser tab would be just if I was going to stay just on this tab right now. So I'm just going to click. Okay, so I'm going to click browser tab. So Elisa, actually, could yeah. I ask you before you sure. do that, what, sure. what happens when you click on show more options? Okay. Maybe that uh, was oh, that's question. probably, yeah, that's probably where it was. Okay, uh, right there. So show more options. It's the countdown. Um, it defaults at three seconds, so that means like when will your, after you hit record, it'll record, it'll go three, two, one, and then you start talking or doing whatever you want to do. This one shows your drawing tools when you're on, when you are recording on the bottom left, you'll see like your pen tool or your high spot highlight. If you don't want that to show because you're not going to use them, you can toggle that off. So... If you don't want to count down to, if you just, as soon as you hit record and it starts recording, that's fine. You can turn that off. But then you can also make it longer too, five seconds or 10 seconds. And then tab audio, um, I think, oh, I think that's if, <laughs> I think I should have done that with the, if you're, if you're, if you're making a video of a video, you probably want to click that on there. I think it'll pick up the, the sound better. That's probably why you couldn't hear my, uh, the, the screencast I made of the video. You couldn't hear the sound very well because I didn't tab that. I didn't hit this. So that might be that one right there. And then um, you hit record. And sorry, again, if, you're, if you have a fast computer, it's gonna go by much faster. Oh, there's my three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Okay, so here is my demonstration of how Screencastify works. I am recording on my tab right here. I'm showing you the difference between what to share and the more options. When I'm done, I go up to the top. You'll see that I'm recording with the red dot. I click on that and I wait for my slow internet and I stop. I can also pause too if you're like, if you're taking a break or you need to like rethink or whatever. So I hit, I'm not doing anything. I, I let go of my mouse 
and this came up. So I haven't done any, all I did was stop my recording and this comes up automatically. See, you see my um, video. I have to unmute it to hear it. On my tab right here, I'm showing you the difference between what to share and the more options. When I'm done, I go up to the top. You'll see that I'm recording with the red dot. I click on that and I wait for my slow internet and I stop. And the reason why you couldn't see, or I don't know if you can, but I can't see it, is because we're in Zoom and as a presenter, you can't see all those little tools, but it's there. Um, so that was it. So it's in my drive. I'm going to rename this and I'm going to say, you know, example video during presentation. So I can remember, you know, what it was. And I click off, it's saved, it's in my drive. It's totally done. So from here, you can just get the link and then just, you know, open up your email and send it as an email or put it in Remind or, you know, whatever platform you're using to share information with your students. Um, if I hit more options, then those are the things I was telling you. You can put it in your classroom, you can publish YouTube, send in an email right now or get a QR code. So it, it's literally that easy. I mean, I was on my computer, I hit the Screencastify, I recorded, I stopped recording and it's saved. And that's literally it. Let me get back to my... Um, um, so I, I hope like just doing that small little example helped you to realize how user friendly it is. And once you get that on there, it's, it's as, it really is as easy as one, two, three. I'm just moving forward again from what we learned, what we did before. Okay, so here's where we were at. I recorded, I'm done. It's in my drive. Here are the links. Now, for right now, for this, pur for these purposes only, for this basic um, session, you know, just get the link and share it with somebody. Send somebody the email. S uh, send an email with the link and just see how that works. See if they can open up your screencast and and see if that works. For these right here, this is more for YouTube. Um, you'll see these same um, these same um, I don't know what the word is, but you'll see this, oh, options, these, you'll see the same options um, when you're on YouTube, whether you want to just keep it private, only you can do it, public, anybody can see it, or unlisted means um, the link, uh, anybody with the link can see it, okay? So again, that's, okay. If you choose shareable link, this changes automatically. It goes from private, public, and unlisted to unlisted. It's automatic because you're sharing the link anyways. All right, stretch time. So Elisa, yes. while you're stretching, um, yes. can we um, get to some of these questions? Yeah, just real quick, um, I want you to know that I look exactly like this. So <laughs> just to, you know, just a heads up. All right, okay. question. Okay, yeah, we got a bunch of them, so let's see if we can sort okay. through them. Okay, All right. so let's go back to the screencast you showed us, the the breathing in the in the woods one. Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry, here's I'm going to scroll fast. Sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. All right, okay. so here's the question. Okay, so was the photo on your screen, and then you use Screencastify to insert your directions, your audio, your speaking directions? Yes, so this is my presentation. Right, so this is my actual Google slide, okay? And I inserted the picture, because normally if, you've, if you were at one, so uh, let me go back real quick. So you can insert a YouTube by URL or go to U Google Drive. When you, sh so the, here's that sharing I just did. When you make a sharing, it, it puts it to the front. It's the very first one you did. So I literally just, it was the first one. So here's that one, take a deep breath. I renamed it. Okay, so I can do it right now. I can insert here, I can select it. And there's the video and I resize it. Or I can make it, you know, I can make it in the middle of the, I can make it as big or as little as I want. 
So I didn't want to take away from the beautiful picture. So I just made my little screen small, small, small. But it you know it depends on what your your video is and you know how much you know you want to show. You can make it as big or as small. It's that easy. Okay, so let me do that one more time. So I had my in here. I can take this off too. Let me just erase it. Okay, so I had this picture. And I thought, okay, usually I say, take a deep breath, you know, and I just say it out loud. And I thought, you know, I think I'm going to make a screencast and, and have you look at me doing it. So I hit, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it because I'm, I'm on a computer that doesn't have a video, but I, I recorded it. And then I went to insert video. It's right here. Oh, it's right here. Take a deep breath. I selected it, and there it is. And then I made it teeny tiny. I made it small. And the magic has happened. OK. So now, when I presented, here's that picture, and here's me in the little small corner, and I just played it. OK, so let's take a deep breath. And one more time. <sighs> Too much information. We need oxygen to the brain. Let's keep going. So it was just some silly video. I mean, it really, I mean, it wasn't anything. And it took me a couple of seconds. Um, um, you know, if you had this with your students, okay, if you have beginning students, this is amazing because you could have a picture with whatever. And then you could say, okay, students, what do you see in the picture? Um, do you see a tree? Uh, do you see grass? Uh, do you see tree or trees? You know, or something like that. You can make a video of looking at the picture um, and things like that. So you can, and, you know, it, it's just one more element for them to say, hey, I feel connected to you. I'm so sad that I'm not in my, in your, in my teacher's classroom anymore, but I see my teacher right there. So it kind of just gives it one more step of like, oh, I get to see my teacher and I'm so happy because they really do miss you. Um, did that help a little? I think so, yeah. Um, and so here's, so there, okay, so we have some more questions. Sure. Um, actually, the video that you just showed us, you made that with Screencastify, right? The one Correct. of you talking? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, how about this, uh, how about this scenario, Elisa? Okay. What if you had a video and then put a Screencastify video in the video? Yes, that's exactly what this, if you can see my slide right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So yes, I, I just, um, I just screencast the video, but you could, you could, let me get out of this. So you could go to screencastify. And Elisa, oh. I think there's a, I think that there's a related question that some people have been asking about embedding a webcam. Is it related to what you're going to show us, or is that something different? Embedding a webcam. Yes. Um, well, to me, when I hear that, it sounds like you're. Hmm. When I'm thinking webcam, I'm thinking that you, that. Like you're, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I'm not exactly sure what that what what the question is. Okay. Okay, but okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm on a computer that doesn't have a, a webcam right now on it, so I can't really show you. But if you were on, okay, if I had the option to use a webcam right here, it would say webcam. Okay, so I would put the webcam on here. Yes, and I would choose browser tab. That means you're going to see the screen and the webcam at the same time. So as you're watching a video, you can be talking, okay, students. Um, so, you know, click play or, you know, whatever it is. And then do you see the rock in the back? Do you see how he made a happy face? So I'm talking about this video as the video is going on. So you can do that. You can have the screen 
and your webcam at the same time. Now, you don't want to do too much though because it depends on what the focus is. If the focus is on the video, you need to take your webcam off. And in that toolbar that we saw at the bottom, you can toggle on and off between the camera and no camera. So sometimes if there's an important thing and you want them to, to focus on you, turn your webcam on and then do your little talking. And then as soon as the focus needs to go back to the, the, the page or the video or whatever it is you're showing, take your webcam off. Because otherwise it is kind of distracting because they want to see you because they miss you and they're not even listening to what you're saying anymore. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I would do the webcam and then browser tab or desktop in that way. So webcam is only you like we saw with the breathing video. And then the other one is you and the video. Okay, okay Alisa. So yeah, I think, um, so back just on the embed the webcam uh -huh. discussion for a second. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said embed a webcam was one of the options when setting up videos. Are you gonna talk about that? Tomorrow. Yeah, okay. that's because because it's a bigger it's a bigger issue because there's so many again there's so many variables about how you want to share them. Um, I, I kind of we talked about the options you have, but I'll go through in more detail about how you actually do it, or I'll give you demonstrations on how you actually do it. But I want to give you guys an opportunity 